Hello, my name is Bobby Carmen. I appreciate this opportunity to come to you, however you may be watching this video. Uh, we also have radio programs, and we also have Facebook and YouTube programs, and uh, some of them are just audio, and some of them are uh, videos, but however you may be listening to the Grace Gospel, that's what we want you to get interested in. First off, let me say I wish you would get you a King James Version of the Bible and get you some uh, markers and highlighters and don't be afraid to write in your Bible and mark these things where that you will know and by this way, someone in your family or your friends or how, how, wherever your life may take you, uh, you will be able to take this book of the King James Version of the Bible and show them what you have heard and what you have learned and what you see in the scripture now versus any type of religion that you may have been involved in before. Because uh, definitely I always want to make an emphasis that salvation is not a religion. It's not a man-made denomination. Salvation comes directly from the throne of grace and it's Jesus Christ that paid the price for your salvation. So he deserves all the glory and all the praise and all the honor uh, that you could possibly give him in your lifetime. Today we want to be addressing a little issue in Matthew. Uh, we're going to go there in uh, chapter 12, uh, verse 36 and th verse 37. Uh, we had a couple inquiries about the, these scriptures here and what I'd just like to make known to you is uh, what the scripture is teaching. It says, By, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Jesus speaking it, it's red letter edition in my Bible, and I want you to understand the meaning of what he's saying. He's saying to you that out of your own mouth, you will either testify of your salvation, of your being born of the Spirit experience, and that you will begin to grow in grace, and that's an expression of the Apostle Paul, how that we have to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, understanding that Matthew here, uh, when Matthew writes this book, he calls the Gospel of Matthew, is what man has named it. I don't think Matthew named it that, but man has named it the Gospel of Matthew uh, and put it in the New Testament form. But what I want you to see is, by your own mouth, what you talk about, what you're involved in in your life, the things you touch and the things that you uh, go on with your speech, magnifying and glorifying or praising or honoring or even condemning. You can even condemn the book of the Bible with your mouth. You can talk about it in a harsh way. You can t uh, have things read to you and you can say, I don't believe that. And you, therefore, you will not get involved in it, neither will you try to defend it. But the truth of the scripture here is, by your own mouth, you will be justified uh, to uh, be awarded the kingdom of heaven, and that is your reward, and eternal life. But by your mouth, how, whatever you speak of, whatever is in uh, your heart, the Bible says that of the abundance of the heart, here, the mind, not this heart that pumps blood. The heart, the heart of man is his mind. It's the knowledge and the wisdom that we accumulate through life. And it's through it that the abundance of this heart is where this mouth speaks from. And Jesus said, out of your mouth comes adulteries and fornications and uh, worshiping of idols and graven images. Of your mouth you glorify things and you praise things and 
We just have to be careful what we're exalting. Because remember, you're going to give account for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. So think about what you're saying. And think about what you're being involved in and what you're doing. Because many, many people today, throughout the course of a calendar year, in our Egyptian calendar of 12 months, we are involved in a lot of things. And those days and times and seasons that roll up from the month of January plumb to the uh, month of December, there are things that are set there and they're put there by man and they're notable by man and by men they are all magnified and glorified. And that's how a lot of times we ruin ourselves because what we're saying and what we're involved in in our speech. We're talking about vanity and we're talking about idols and we're talking about graven images. We exercise uh, the use of being in those things that are carried away in the world by Gentile people, heathen people, uh, p paganism and heathenism is all involved in our calendar year. And it's our mouth that is speaking good of them. It's going along and contributing to the fake and uh, the fairy tale systems of it. It's magnifying the idols that are uh, actually just a figment of imagination. There are no idols and graven images in the Word of God that will ever be accepted. All idols and graven images will be condemned and those things that are practiced in our calendar year such as Christmas by putting up a tree which came direct out of paganism according to Daniel chapter I mean yeah Daniel chapter 10 uh, we need to uh, magnify the Lord and what we need to do is uh, in our heart find out what's right and what's wrong now I said Daniel chapter 10 because we're going to be in Daniel in a minute but it's Jeremiah chapter 10 that, talking about the Christmas tree that comes out of heathenism and paganism and he's telling Jeremiah not to learn those things and not to practice them. Well, today, look at all that we have added in our generation. We've added flying reindeer and one has a light in his nose and we've added uh, the elves and the people working at the North Pole the year around to bring presents and things to our children. And we're doing things uh, in such a way, we're just carried away to dumb idols, Apostle Paul calls them. And so what we want to do is clean our speech up, clean our conversation up. Get these fables and fictional characters out of your conversation, especially of Christianity. Christianity has nothing to do with these lies and fantasies and fairy tales. It has nothing to do with all the things that the world has put within the seasons of these holy days. Uh, the Feast of Dedication was a feast day of the Jews. It was celebrated in the month of Kislev. And what we have to understand is it was a holy day of the Jews, one of seven. And what was practiced on it was not the things that we are practicing today. Uh, it would have been a solemn, holy feast unto God, and into which nothing would be done in form of work or labor or uh, spending money or partying or banqueting or doing any such thing, such as our world does today on December the 25th. But anyway... What you have to learn to do is clean your conversation up when you become born of the Spirit. And the only way you can do that is to get this book. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. All of this book, the whole entire Bible, is inspired and was written by holy men in their generation and time as they spoke by the Spirit of God and were moved by the Spirit of God. So... Uh, what Jeremiah was doing back in Jeremiah chapter 10, the Lord was saying uh, to not learn the ways of the heathen. But yet our 
Life is full of heathenism and paganism. And we've learned it and we've added to and built upon it. And that is our fault and our failure. For don't you know, you're going to be accountable for every idle word that has come out of your mouth. You don't understand you're going to stand before the white throne judgment and you're going to be talking to God why you did these things. But today, we have to separate the truth from fiction. The truth stands far above all the lies and the fables that the devil has cleverly devised and put in the realm of our society. He has put them in the church. It's not wrong to have Christmas trees in the church. It's not wrong to talk about Santa Clauses, which is a lie and a myth and a legend. It's not long, wrong to talk about flying reindeers with lights in their nose. It's not wrong. The church is car carried away and indulges in it, and they just love it. The bigger the lie, the better, and bigger their smile. And I want you to know something. It's all going to catch up to you one day. So you better be searching this book to see if I'm right or to see uh, what you can do in your life to correct it. And that's why I want you to understand what Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37 says. You're not getting away with it. You think all the things that's in your life that you've done, that you've got swept under a rug or closed up in a closet, is not going to come back to haunt you one day. But I assure you, it's going to. And in the form of worshiping God and idols and graven images and trying to get Him to accept you, you see, it ain't going to work. God has no part in whatsoever maketh the lie and whatsoever is causing the lie. He has no part of that. So I want you to understand uh, where you're standing with God. If you have these lies of Easter in your life, if you are having these idols of Easter bunnies and colored eggs and colored chickens and all of this candy and all this new clothes bit and going out and standing in the graveyard, Jesus ain't going to appear to no graveyard. He's coming. I want you to understand that. He's coming. But he's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. And that's where you need to be in the living. If you wait too late, you'll not take part in the first resurrection. And therefore, you'll die, pass away, and you'll be called in the day of the second resurrection at the white throne judgment. And there you will stand uh, and give account for everything that you do. So understand, you are responsible for your own actions. You're not going to be able to blame nobody. There's been plenty of time for you to search it out and find it for yourself. It's been plenty of time for you to uh, correct yourself and try to find the truth in God's Word, not in man's religion. Man's religion is full of idols and graven images and lies and fantasies and fairy tales, and they were all put there by Satan. Satan is the god of this world, and Satan is the person that's behind every deception and every little lie. So know assuredly that whatever you have done in your life, you will give account for it uh, in the day of judgment. So... Uh, this little message here that we're sending out to people who are confused and mixed up, I want you to know that God is expecting you to change. He wants you to change. He wants you to uh, come by the way of the cross and not the way of the world. The way of the world is evil and wicked and all religions are full of of fantasies and fairy tales and lies and things that Satan has cleverly intertwined into those religions and denominations. And I, uh, if you don't think that uh, the devil 
is in the church world, friend, you've been misled. You've been deceived. The devil is behind all the doctrines of these religions and these systems that have been put in place by Satan. Satan and his ministers have become ministers of light. They are fulfilling the pulpits of all our mainstream religions and denominations, and they carry nothing but lies and deceptions. He don't want you to know the truth. He don't know, want you to know the work of the cross. He wants you to stay in darkness and have darkness in your life in the form of all the things the world has to offer. And that is deception, friend. God has nothing to do with an image, a graven image, an idol, or anything that makes a lie. And... Friend, when you tell your children about Santa Clauses and reindeers and Easter bunnies, I don't know any bigger lie. It's a lie from the pits of hell. And I want you to understand that. I want you to think about what you're doing, putting your kid's soul in your hand and teaching them these lies that's going to be took, took in by them as young men and women, and then they will go out into the world and they will get married and bring forth children and those lies and traditions of them lies will carry on till the next generation and they will carry and continue to carry them on into other generations. And here we are, 2,000 years almost since Jesus was crucified, whom was put in the grave and then uh, rose again and the lies are more today than they was then. The fantasies and the fairy tales that the devil has deceived the world with, how he has made the whole world to follow after his image and that image is a church, it's a building, and it has no power. God does not live in buildings that's been made by man's hands. It, they, he lives in buildings of his creation, which is your body. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that Christ lives within you? But yet you take the temple of God and then you fill it full of idols and graven images. Don't you know that you're committing a sacrilege? Don't you know that you are the offspring of God and that you, your body, is where he wants to live? And you are just continuing on in the traditions of the world, not giving any heed to the truth. The truth does not make an impression on you strong enough to tear you away from your idols and graven images. You just glorify in them every season, every time it rolls around in the calendar year. You're ready for it. You're prepared and your mouth is going to blow it up. Your mouth is just going to keep magnifying it uh, and uh, the whole world is going to see it and the whole world is going to rejoice. But I want you to know something. They all are going to give account someday of what they are doing. So, we're just trying to help you. I, I'm just trying to make you see what this book contains. A lot of people don't know these things are in the book. They don't have any idea what an idol is or a graven image is. And unless some man from God points it out to them, they're not going to see it. It's just going to stay in the realm of their mind and their mouth is just going to run off at the time and the season of the year that it is and Satan is going to be glorified and he is going to deceive more and more. Don't you know Satan is a thief and that he is trying to steal your soul from God? That's how he's going to do it, through lies, through fantasies and fairy tales. He's going to make your religion appear to be the way that salvation comes. But it's not so. There is no religion on earth 
that possesses salvation. Salvation comes by and through one man, Jesus Christ the righteous. It's him and him alone that can save you uh, from the day of destruction and the day of judgment in the white throne judgment that's going to take place in Revelation 20. So you need to fear the Lord with your heart and you need to ask God to come into your life and change your life. Make your life something that uh, is he's going to be happy with and that he's satisfied with. You, you're just going along with the flow of the world which is controlled by the devil. He has the whole world deceived and their minds are blinded. They wouldn't know the truth from a lie and they don't know an idol or a graven image when somebody tells it to them. Because by tradition, there's just something that's funny. There's just something that the world goes along with, sniggers about, but you don't know the severity. I'm telling you, you need to take this a little bit more uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, take it into your life and begin to fear what God can do to the unbeliever. You're an unbeliever when you have idols in your life. You're an unbeliever when you do things that the world does. The scripture teaches us that we as Christians, we're in this world, but it's not necessarily all the cares and the things that goes on in this life, uh, lifetime. Uh, John puts it pretty good. He says that uh, the things that the eye sees and the things that uh, the flesh covets after and lust is after, all these things are not of God. Uh, but we have been taught that materialism and paganism and heathenism, that there's nothing wrong with it. And the bigger and the better that you do it year after year after year in your home, well, it's acceptable. And you see, that's a lie from the pits of hell. God does not want his body, his church, associated with, with the filthiness of this world. And that's what's going on. Our world has polluted us. It gets inside of our mind. And that's all we concentrate on. That's all we think about. And the things that we're doing. Uh, we have no idea. What it's going to do. In the day of judgment. We are going. To. Uh, be cast alive. Into the lake of fire simply because of the things we want to hold on to in our flesh. All of this fleshly stuff, it's not of God. God intends and purposes for the believer uh, to come out of the world and not be a partaker of it. And the truth will separate you. It will call you out among the heathenism and about the paganism and the things, it will bring you to the truth of what God likes and what God dislikes. You know, uh, the scripture is very, very important in a believer's life. But we know that the world has a lot of Bibles. Uh, most homes have multiple Bibles. But the Bibles themselves are not being read and studied and putting the knowledge in here. And this is where it needs to be here. This is the heart that makes decisions. This is the heart that rules and governors what we do every day. Uh, the choices we make and the things that we choose to live with and the things that we choose acceptable in our life, it's all here. It all starts right here. If we have a pattern of good things here, if we have an understanding of the truth and what God likes in here, then no doubt your choice that you make and the things that you want to do for God will take priority in your life. But our world, our world has carried so many people away by religion. Religion 
can never obtain and give you eternal life. It's not possible. Religion is a man-made thing. Religion is something that you and I have to separate ourselves from. We are not to be of this world. We are not to be of the things that uh, the world uh, thinks and deceive you into believing that you have to do. All of what's going on in this world, uh, just because you have liberty, just because you have freedom in Christ, that does not make you that you can go out and join yourself to everything because of your freedom and your liberty. Your freedom is not to get involved in every protest and every lifting up of an idol or a graven image. I don't care whether it be a clover leaf or a pot of gold or a lucky uh, whatever it may be, a leprechaun or anything that these things portray in your life. Friend, examine yourself to see whether you're in the truth or not. Is that what you picture Jesus Christ to be? Something of that form or something of that nature? Is that what you picture him to be? A figment of imagination or a lie and a deception totally made up out of uh, carnal-minded people? You know, the truth about Christmas, the bottom line, is dollars and cents. The truth about Easter is do dollars and cents because that's all the world intends and purpose to do. Some way to cheat you out of your money. Some way to make you spend what you've made of hard-earned money and make it look like that you have to do these things or you're a cruel, mean mama or daddy. That's, that's the impression that people have Well, if you don't give Christmas gifts. Well, I want you to know something. The world uh, is wrong, and the world is controlled and ruled by Satan. So understand that, and uh, try to separate yourself from the ways of the world. Well, I see uh, time is running a little short here. Uh, tune in for our next programs. We have several on Facebook, YouTube, and try to uh, get yourself out of the information of the world.